Yo, what's good guys? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over how to create this gradient color transition. We're going to be using a few effects as well as creating an animation in order to create this really cool transition. So let's get right into it. Okay, so here in After Effects, I'm going to be creating a transition between these two clips. And the first thing we're going to do is focus on the second clip that we're transitioning into. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. Cut this adjustment layer to the same length as the second clip. And the first effect I'm going to add is a glow. I'll be using the regular glow and I'm going to decrease the glow intensity to 0.5. For the next effect, we're going to add a curves. I'm going to bring up the highlights just by a little. And then I'm going to bring down the shadows. That just adds a little more depth to our footage. And then for the next effect, we're going to be adding a CC toner. So this is the effect that we're going to use in order to create that really texturized look. So instead of having the tones at tritone, I'm going to change that to Pentone, and you're going to notice that we can control all five of these colors. The ones we're going to be focusing on is the bright mid-tones as well as the dark tones. For the bright color, I'm going to change that to a blue color. So I'll make it like that, and you're going to notice that we have these blue highlights on our footage. For the mid-tones, I'm going to just make that completely white. And then for the dark tones, I'm going to select the same color as the brights, but instead of having it the exact same color, I'm going to make it a little brighter. And you're going to notice that our subject or our footage in general just has all these blue gradients on our footage. For the next effect, we're going to add a noise. Increase the amount of noise to around 15%, and that adds a little more texture to our footage. You can also change the order of your effects. If you notice that I put the CC toner under the noise, it looks a little different. And then if I move the curves underneath the CC toner, it appears a lot brighter. So you can always just move around the effects to see whichever look that you're going for. And this is the final look for the second clip. So this is the clip that we're going to be transitioning into. The next thing we're going to do is create a color blur transition. So let's create a new adjustment layer. And for this adjustment layer, I want it to start at the two frame mark. So I'll just cut that right there. I also want this transition to feel pretty smooth. So I'm going to make this adjustment layer 16 frames long. After cutting the adjustment layer, I'm going to add a tint. Okay, so for this effect, we're going to be using it in order to create that fade in and then fade out effect. And I'm going to change that white color to the same color as the dark tones for the CC toner effect from the first adjustment layer that we created. So go to the dark tones and then I'm going to just copy this code, click copy, and then go to the second adjustment layer that we just created go to the white color. I'm going to delete the white color and then add the blue color. So just paste that code right here. And then we're going to keyframe the amount to tint as 0% at the start because we want to create that fade in effect. Go forward eight frames, keyframe the amount to tint at 100% and then go towards the end, keyframe it to zero. Now you guys can see that the color slowly fades in as the animation is happening. The next effect we're going to add is a directional blur. For this effect, I want it to appear a little later than the tint effect. Go towards the beginning of this adjustment layer and I'm gonna go forward four frames. Keyframe the blur length at zero and then open up that keyframe. Go forward another four frames and I'm going to really increase the blur length to around, I would say 100. Go towards the end of the adjustment layer, keyframe that back to zero. By keyframing the directional blur length, it creates that transparency at the top edge as well as the bottom edge of our footage. So in order to fix that we're going to add a motion tile make sure to add the motion tile above the tint and i'm going to increase the output height to 200 click mirror edges and that gets rid of the transparency i'm also going to grab all these keyframes and easy ease them this is what we have for the transition so far the next thing we're going to do is create a new solid layer and make sure the color of the solid layer is white because we're going to be using the solid layer in order to create a one frame flash effect. So I'm going to make this layer one frame. We're going to bring this layer two frames back because I want it to start right before we transition into the next clip. And then we're going to create another solid layer so that it's the similar color as this blue color that we're going to be transitioning into. But before we do that, go to the second adjustment layer and then go to the tint effect. And I'm going to copy this color code right here, create a new solid and then copy that code right here so that it's a blue color. Make this layer six frames long, bring this layer one frame forward. And the reason why I created this layer is because I wanna fade out this blue color into the next clip. I feel like it will make it look a lot smoother. So we're gonna keyframe the opacity, keyframe that at 100% at the start, and then go towards the end, keyframe that to 0%. Easy ease the keyframes. This is what we have for our transition so far. 
So by adding that white solid layer and the blue solid layer, I feel like it makes the transition look a lot smoother because we have that flash effect for the white solid layer and then we have that fade out animation for the blue solid layer. The final thing we're gonna do is create another adjustment layer. We're going to make this layer six frames long. Make sure to bring this layer between the two clips because you wanna have three frames on the left and three frames on the right. For this adjustment layer, we're gonna be using it in order to create a shake so that it makes this transition look even better. So let's add a transform. For this effect, we're gonna be keyframe the position every one frame so let's go to the beginning of the layer and then keyframe the position open up the keyframes go forward one frame and i'm only going to be keyframing the y value of the position so i'll keyframe it like that where it drags the layer down and then i'm going to go forward another frame make sure to drag it all the way up keep doing that until you reach the end of the adjustment layer for the final keyframe i'll keyframe that at the original position Easy ease all of the keyframes, also turn on the motion blur. And because we keyframe the Y value of the position, we have all this transparency. So we're going to be adding a motion tile. Make sure to have this effect above the transform. Increase the output height to 300, click mirror edges. This is what we have for our final gradient transition. So we have that really cool effect where it fades out of the original color of the footage. And then it fades into this really cool blue color for the second footage. And that's all I have for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.